So hello and welcome to our final instalment of our lockdown interview series, Body Chat. We've quizzed a very small group of English athletes who have made it to the top of the game these last few weeks and also chatted to one of Sweden's most successful players. And today we have a very special guest to mark the end of the series. Richard Dubell not only played indoor, beach and sitting volleyball during his playing career, but he also represents his country in each discipline too. He has 19 Division One titles and 15 National Cups to his name and notably played for Team GB at the 2012 Paralympic Games. Uh, Richard, welcome. How are things going and, and where are you at at the moment? Yeah, all going very well in this, these weird and wonderful times of, of, of lockdown, but um, busy at work really, just sort of working from home. Um, fortunately, we are, we are finding it busy, what we do, so um, just adjusting working to home with the family, but um, that's uh, pretty much keeping busy really. And you're in, you're in England at the moment, aren't you? Yes, in London. I only say because out of, out of chance, every single person we spoke to so far I seem to have tuned in from a different country. We seem to be sort of touring the world with this, but um, we're, we finished on English English soil. Yeah. Um, so it's glad to have you there with us then. Um, so I just want to take you, first of all, right back then, and Richard. I want to talk about indoor volleyball, first of all, if that's OK, because that's that was your, your big introduction to the sport. And I wanted to talk about how, how it all began then, sort of yeah, your first experience of volleyball and who it was that, that introduced you to the sport. Um, gosh, I remember what it <laughs> back in the day. I mean, it was at school. Um, the school I went to, um, there was a couple of schools in the area, and typically it was a PE teacher, Barry Jenkins, who was a hugely influential um, person within Newcastle staff's um, volleyball club and in the area. So he got us into volleyball from a school's perspective. Um, and at that stage, we'd got two or three years above me. Um, Quite decent success in the under six national under 16s and under 19s as it was then um so the school did well we, we managed to sort of win the under 16s and uh under under 19 under 18 schools competitions um and through the, through barry and, and the school um we managed to get into the, the england under 16s team um for a couple of years um back in the day so it was largely that's how we all got in and started playing for Newcastle staffs um, in the second team and then got into the, the first team and pretty much went through the Division 4, Division 3, we won Division 2. Um, we managed to uh, just pit Mallory to the post in Division 2, so um, it was nice to actually win the division because Mallory came second that year. Um, but then I, uh, I kind of decided to uh, Move to move to London and then play for Mallory, um, and then the rest is history, as they say. So before I touch on your sort of Mallory experience, then do you remember what it was about the game then that just sort of caught you? You know, the, the, the excitement, the fact that you and as as you went on to, you know, you couldn't let go, but you were sort of in love with the sport. Yeah, I mean, I was playing um, a lot of other sports. I was playing um, good level football, cricket, um, but volleyball sort of. It, it, I don't know. I think I think there's two reasons. One, it 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 got because it's it, it challenges you mentally as, as as much as physical. Um, but I think that the, the key thing was that because there was a lot of success with the school, yeah. Um, and there was a lot of players above me that had represented at England schools or were going on to the England junior team, so you could actually see the success, and and so whilst you got in to play the sport and, and realised that it, it, it's enjoyable and, and but I think that aspect of success and progression um, was really sort of exciting whereas the other sports you, it, you didn't seem to get that progression and you didn't seem to be able to progress so quickly so it was more of the, the, the success and obviously when you sort of get a trial to, to sort of represent your country at under 16 level you, you just your eyes just light up and you know then you're hooked sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Do you remember your first experience? I mean, I'm probably taking a, a, a little a back a few years here, but do you remember your first taste of a? I guess it would be an England camp there at the under sixteen level. Yeah, well, it, it was largely you build up to play some home internationals, so it was largely playing England um, against Scotland, which is largely the biggest the biggest game for that. I mean, I, I you know, I would. Certainly wouldn't let my children do it. It's a different day, different age. But we used to. It was basically get on the train from Stoke, um, come down to London and train for the weekend once you got selected. So 
at the age of 14, 15, jumping on the train going to London. So. He's changed a little bit now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you more process and protocols in place. But <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was a good experience, helped to sort of shape you as a as a player then. And so so at Staffs then, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said you won the Division Four title, the Division Three title, and the, the Division Two title. Yeah. Um, and then as you as you were mentioning, you you decided to leave then to join Mallory. What what was what was going through your mind at the time? And was it a was it a work commitment then that brought you to London, or was it of a sort of the, the opportunity to to move that you really wanted to to, to seize? Uh, it was a promise of free trainers. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, at, at, at that I was a sort of 17, 18, and I just getting into the England under 19 team, um, coached by John Nash, who was a coach of Mallory. Um, and he was building um, uh, the, the Mallory team from you know, a very successful schools team. Um, he was getting some players, and, and over the course of a couple of years it was whilst I was training with the under 19s I was spending a lot of time in London anyway um, so and Mallory got um, sponsorship with Mizuno um, and, and it was sort of a big push to get sort of as many um, perhaps the better players but it was just a push to get the best team that they could possibly get um, and it was really exciting to, to sort of come down to London and, and at the time people were tent teams were by and large training maybe once or twice a week um but Mallory we were training four nights a week plus at weekends plus a weights program as well so it, it was a real step up and it was just a it, it was the right move to move down to it was so it was principally to move down to play volleyball and then I got a job off the back of that so that was the reason why I moved down and it was it was a good move to make and it was a pretty successful team as well then that you joined because and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but you won 19 titles with Mallory and 15 national cups. Um, that's, 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 that's quite a record. That's quite a sort of trophy cabinet you've got to build up over the year there for the, for the club there. Um, what was the success down to? Was it down to, the, I guess, this, this structure at the top then that you mentioned about, the, the, I guess, the sponsorship on board, the, the, the training programme they could put in, I guess, with, with, with more support from above? Um, it was a combination thing. I mean, the, we had a really good, strong. T the team did evolve over the years, over the over the yeah. 19, 15 odd seasons or whatever, 20 seasons. Um, but there was a real drive to to sort of um, compete with the, the with European teams, not just. We, we kind of quickly realised that we were, um, you know, that the UK competitions were, were sort of coming not easily by any stretch of the imagination, but it was trying to sort of compete with international teams that so that was the drive um but by and large it was to put the team together and equally that there was a, there was kind of like a change of the the old guards of, of you know we, when we first started there was liverpool and polonia um they were they were winning sort of titles and um and speedwell before that so it, there was a lot of competition to to actually sort of get those out of the way and beat those teams and the only way you can do that is by training harder and, and longer and, and, and equally obviously the better players you get the you know the easier it is and do you who do you remember sort of the, the your sort of favorite players that you played alongside them over the years i imagine like you said obviously the squad changed that a lot over those years um or well, well, two questions really sorry before i go on to the next one so the first one, who would be guess sort of your, your favourite players and that you played with over the years at the Mallory? And the second one, I guess, were you maybe one of the few that that, that stayed for such a long time, or was there anyone else that um, was also part of that, that core unit? Yeah, I think um, I, I from from when I moved down from that first title, and that first when I moved down, we we won the league that for, that first year, um, and the, we won the cup the, the previous year before I joined. Um, and then when I finished in 2010, we won the we won the cup in 2010 in the league, and that was a, a nice little send off in terms of you know the last one. So I was kind of, I guess, sort of there throughout. But Jefferson, who's who's instrumental, who's Mr. Volleyball pretty much in this country. You know, he was at that time he was also playing and assisting John Nash as the coach, and then went on to obviously coach Mallory. Um, well, at all the teams in Mallory, so, but playing with Jefferson, just it just takes you to a different level. He's just an amazing player, 
Um, but we've Matt Jones, who's now in Switzerland, who went off to play professionally. Marcus Russell, he's in the UK now, but went off to play professionally. Um, you know, there's there's so many. Stuart Dunn was an amazing passer in the early days. There's just so many different players that um, have gone on. Stuart Watson, you know, there's player after player after player that have gone on to play professionally um, that came through through Mallory. Um, Joel Banks was a, came to play mm -hmm. and trained yeah. with us and um, was a setter for us, you know, so some really good quality players that have come through and, and you know, Jefferson sort of sprinkled a little stardust on them and, and it sort of got them to, to strive to be the best they can. It's good to hear as well. Many, many of the names you mentioned there stay involved as well. And mm. um, I'm, I'm so relatively new to the volleyball family, but a lot of those names you mentioned are, are familiar to me because of the, the fact they've still got big profiles in the game mm. and they've the got kind of a bit more of a, a, a non playing legacy as well, there for what they've been able to achieve. So, um, so obviously, you have a, a, a really successful and indoor career. There are lots of titles and divisions, and it sounds like you've some great players you played alongside. Are there any memories that really stand out? Are there any, if it was maybe the, is it the 2010? Um, division when it sounds like that was a pretty special one, the cup win that sounds like a pretty special one. Are there any other moments that really stick out as, as highlights of that indoor career? Um, obviously the first the first titles, um, you know, sort of really stick in the memories because, you know, the first ones always always are important. But I think 2010 was, 2010 was pretty special because I think sort of 2008, 2009, well certainly sort of 2006, 7, 8, 9, the team wasn't getting as strong. It, it, we were hanging on is probably a good phrase. You know, the team wasn't, as, and there's other teams. Polonia were getting stronger um, over the years. We we were battling with Aquila, and they but they so there's there's teams coming up, and and Sheffield had a program up, and you know so Sheffield were sort of being competitive. So we we didn't win. We didn't win the league, we didn't win the cup, so we were in losing the semi finals, coming second in the league. So it was, and I knew that was coming to the end of what I wanted to do and, and play. So, you know, the, the 2010 season was really special because, A, obviously we finished it, but we managed to win the cup as well. I mean, it was at Crystal Palace, which I think is by far the best venue for volleyball in this country. Um, it, it was a full packed crowd. Um, we played Polonia, and, and, and you know, Polonia probably won't help me, more than likely, for saying this, but we did a good job on them. Um, <laughs> and um, but it was a good way to finish off because it, it was a good London battle, and we've always had a good battle with Polonia over the years. Um, so that was probably the special moment just to, just to sign off with that. It was really good. And then, what, what were the opportunities like for playing abroad, sort of? Not, I guess, not sort of the 2010 um, time, but maybe during your earlier to mid indoor career, were those opportunities there, and did you ever consider, you know, going abroad to to you know, become a pro? Yeah, I mean, there was there was there was lots of opportunities, um, and there was a couple of instances where it was sort of really close to to sort of getting to do it, um, but for a couple of, sort of personal circumstances and work commitments, and um, and also at that stage we had a quite a good GB program as well so my we were training four or five nights a week with with Mallory plus the weekends for England and GB and we were we were training something like 20 30 days a year and camped so it, the, the program was a really good program so I didn't feel that um, I needed to go and play professional volleyball to, to play more volleyball um, it was more of to do it for an experience, but for me, for work and personal circumstances, it didn't really didn't really work out. So it was just fine. Out, out of interest, where was it that you you maybe considered or that an opportunity came up? Or can you remember where in the world? Yeah, there was there was teams in Belgium and, and Switzerland, um, and a couple of uh, a couple of teams in Swiss and Sweden at the time. Um, so I had some trials in Belgium and, and Switzerland, um, and they were all sort of you know, it, it w would have happened, but it just it kind of backed out with it. It just wasn't, it just wasn't the right time for me. But, but of course, like you said, you know, you, you, you had a successful junior career then as a, an England international, and then you went into the, the senior squad. So you, you got a, a bit of travel from that, a bit of playing abroad with that. Um, and from looking at your, your, I think your introduction to the England indoor um, game, you had a really, really nice start because 
I believe you, in your first match you played Brazil. Um, <laughs> do you remember that? Do you remember what that was like? Was that a bit of a, a baptism of fire on the on the international scene? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> um, so. It was, it, yeah, because um, I, I, the age of, I think it was 18, 19, when I, I, I made my debut, and it was um, against Brazil, and they were, I mean, they've never not really been very good, but they, you know, they were a really good team. Um, so, yeah, it was a proper baptism of fire, um, and then, you know, Obviously, the rules of the game's changed since then, and, and, and everything's changed. But you know, walking on and you've got those yellow shirts on the other side of the net is pretty special. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good one. Um, so, obviously, indoor wasn't your own an early discipline you played. Um, well, you played all three. I mean, I've already let that one out of the bag. Um, but you also started to play beach volleyball then. At which point did you did you jump into beach volleyball, and how did that come about? Um, it went side by side because of this. Obviously, everyone knows volleyball's quite a good tight community and, and you know that that's one of the benefit and beauties of the game that everyone is so tight um but on the beach side of things there was at that stage there was a pretty much you either paid indoor or you played beach and if you played indoor you the coaches wouldn't allow you to play beach volleyball and and it, it just started to i think a, a, a say well hang on a minute why not you know, it's not detrimental at all. If anything, it makes you a better indoor player. Yeah. So some of us started playing more, more um, beach volleyball and, and sort of actually sort of wanting to play both. Um, and plus the fact that, it, you know, it's, a, it's, <laughs> if, if you, it's not for everybody, but it is a really enjoyable game. And, you know, and, and from a setting perspective, because obviously my position as a setter, on the indoor game but by and large you, you are just that's your function when you're playing beach that is just part of your function you've got to hit you've got to defend you've got to block and so you know for, uh, that's what i missed on the indoor game but when you play beach you've got to play every position and, and do everything and that that's that's really uh, you know really exciting and it's good enjoy that bit and who, who did you play with um Quite a few people over the years, um, and probably people um, remind me as time goes by. But principally, a, a lot of the my um, beach was played with Matthew Jones, um, um, Clayton Lucas, who um, sons play. Um, you know, we played a lot of games with with those two mainly. Um, and you know, as we were going through my first um, Weymouth win was you know against a. You know, Rob Kittleton and Brian Donnellan, which is the great win, just to, you know, make sure that they never win. Um, um, but yeah, Matthew was really good. Um, Clayton was really good. Um, and, and playing that beach tour back then, there was about six or seven tournaments um, to, you know, to, to, to win the whole series was, you know, it, it was good. So I think it was, so it's obviously at the moment, it's not the UK B team, before that it was VEBT. But before that, and there might have been, I guess, a, a period before uh, between where it was called something else, it was the National Beach Volleyball Tour. Um, so, which you said there were seven locations, the seven locations you mentioned there. Um, did, did you have a favourite? Was there like a, a particular venue that or, or, or place that you, you played the best? You had the best support, or um, just 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 like the surroundings, like the like the surroundings? Yeah, I think it's, uh, myself and Matthew, we, we seem to have quite a lot of success, success at Margate. Which has always seemed to be, a, a, for some reason, seemed to be a good good tournament for us. But I, I would I would imagine that everybody that's played beach volleyball would say that Weymouth, the Weymouth tournament, um, would be the best hands down. Um, it is for me, for sure, because a it's it's so well organised and uh, it's so well attended. The, you know, the, it, there's always a good crowd. The good the sand's brilliant, um, and it's a good competition and pretty much everybody wants to win Weymouth, um, you know, so, you know, if you're available, you'd, you'd, you'd make the time and effort to get down to Weymouth. We had um, Denise Austin on for the first of this episode of Poly Chat, and she almost said identically what you've just said there. You know, yeah. everyone wants to win, it's the favourite place to go, and it's such a, it's such a great event. So, um, and fingers crossed for next year, I know they've announced their date, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to going along to my first one, sort of capture that atmosphere, so. Um, mm. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And the guys that organise it are brilliant, you know. I mean, so are the other tours as well, but, the, you know, Weymouth is pretty special. 
That sounds cool. And so similar to indoor, obviously you had a success on the domestic scene, but then you also took it internationally as well. Um, just tell me a little bit about sort of where you travelled to, who you went with and, and how you got on. Um, yeah, so th there was a sort of a, a push to, again, um, you know, try yourself and, and compete against the, the best you can. Um, so myself and Matthew, um, we did a couple of FLVB tours um, just to see if we can get through onto the World Series. Um, you know, we only played the two events and we went down to Marseille. Um, Matthew at the time was playing in, in Belgium and he'd got a, a car with the team. So we drove down to Marseille um, and played in that tournament. We didn't get through the qualies, um, unfortunately. Um, and then we drove from Marseille up to Berlin okay. um, and, and played in the Berlin tournament. Um, so uh, uh, managed to win a game against Portugal, but um, again didn't didn't manage we lost to japan and, and, and didn't get through but it is a, a an amazing experience and just the sheer fact of driving in a peugeot 205 from from london to marseille to berlin was a hell of an experience yeah, it sounds it sounds like great fun. I'm, fun I'm always envious when you see the guys in the a rough around the world playing at this place and that place and all these exotic locations and then um, yeah it sounds like you've had a, a, a cool little european adventure between the two of those yeah, I, I think you know that that's sometimes I think that's missed on the um, you know the, the amount of dedication that the beach athletes have. Whilst you know on the indoors, just as competitive and training wise, and but by and large, you travel as a team. It's 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 a lot more organised from a from an indoor perspective. But the guys that do it on the beach, that you know they 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 do it all themselves, and and largely they're funding it themselves. So you know the the you know, hats off to, to people that compete on it at, at sort of a, a, a consistent basis because it is hard work. You're not staying in great hotels, but you've got to compete with, with people that are, you know, professionally paid to do it. So, you know, it is tough. And so the final piece of the jigsaw then, you, you, you went and eventually started playing sit-in volleyball. Um, so I guess one of the few people, well, not one of the few people who's played all three uh, disciplines, but you obviously went on to represent Team GB in that, and that is, puts you in a very unique category. Um, first of all, how, how did it come about? How did you go from playing indoor and beach to becoming a, a sitting volleyball player? Well, um, I've, I've carried a knee injury whilst I was playing indoor and beach volleyball for quite some time. Um, and also over the years, my other knee wasn't particularly great and, and I had that impact. So I'd got a hip issue as well. So when it was coming to the end of my sort of indoor and, and beach um, playing career, my hip and my knees was just getting worse and worse. Um, and I think when, um, when we got sort of awarded London in 2006, I think it was when the, when the, the award came out, I think, um, or 2008, there was sort of people talking that when the sitting team was getting put together that maybe I could get classified um, but it didn't really sort of take too much attention to it but in 2010 when I retired um, you know there's sort of more discussion and uh, around the classifications and it was it seemed to be clear that maybe I could get classified and clearly you know wasn't around to play it indoor or beach in 2012 but the thought of still being able to sort of contribute at an elite level in sitting volleyball then you know absolutely is going to jump at it with you know grab it with both hands mm -hmm. and, and what a challenge as well like you know never mind learning a new sport and trying to get to grips with all you know the, the different way the game works and um, obviously many different adaptations of the indoor game but then being chucked right in at the deep end you know at the international level um, how how did you prepare then for for, for that sort of huge challenge? Um, well, I, I, a good advantage was is that, that obviously I know volleyball inside out, so that that aspect of it was 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 really helpful. It is a completely different sport, and the court's smaller. It's it's so much more quick. It's it's such such a quick game. Um, good thing was we had in our team some players that hadn't played the the, the, the game before which but were sort of talent id to come in and play the game so we had a good mix of people that were experienced volleyball players and people that were experienced sort of para athletes but not play volleyball 
Um, so it was a good mix of, of sort of getting players up to volleyball speed, if you like, as well as me adapting to, to sort of play a new version of the game. And what did the what did the training regime in, in, involve? Um, did you have sort of a national team set up somewhere? And I appreciate as well, and this is something we touched on a few weeks ago with uh, Kira Michael with the women's team that you know funding funding was an issue, and you know best perhaps didn't have the, the, the best support and the, the best plans as maybe other nations did have. Um, but what were you what were you able to put on, and, and what did that training program look like? Yeah, I mean, the, obviously the sport, the funding, the funding for the um, the various programs, the indoor, the beach, and the, the city programs, it just wasn't enough. Um, and he, hats off to the, the women's indoors team because they largely funded it themselves for the last 18 months or so leading up to the games. Um, but it, Ian Legrand was the, the men's coach um, and they put together a, 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 a really good programme with, um, with Roehampton University. So the programme was really good. Uh, the, 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 the athletes that could actually play, it could commit to being full-time lived at Roehampton um they did a bit of love for but they principally came to Roehampton so we've got guys training every day um myself because I was working I would I'd work and I'd, I'd get over to Roehampton three nights a week and then we'd train at weekends um but in terms of programming put a really good program together and and the, I think I think we got into the sort of top 10 or sort of top top 12 in the world in terms of team so um whilst we qualified for London 2012 by, by hosting. Um, Europe's a difficult category, as we all know, to get through to into an Olympic Games or Paralympic Games anyway, but um, we definitely got up to the, to a level of, of, of competing with the best best teams in the world. And so fast forward then to 2012, um, and strangely, you had the same first opponents as, as the women did. Um, Russia, you faced Russia in the first match. Um, do you, do you remember the moments when you walked out when you had the, the, the crowd on their feet um, getting ready after all that preparation, you know, to, to have your moment? Do you remember what, what was going through your mind and how you're feeling? Yeah, it, it was, I mean, the whole experience was of, of, of the Paralympic Games was just phenomenal. Um, we didn't, we weren't allowed to go on the opening ceremony because we, we were playing the next day. Um, so we watched the opening ceremony from the, from the, from the, from the, Back in the, the sort of like the, oh, I can't remember what they said. It was more of um, the family, family and friends area where you could you could meet family and friends. So we watched it as a team there. But so we had to play Russia the next day. But it, when you sort of go out into the venue and you've got that six or eight thousand people screaming, um, it was you know phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. A bit disappointing because we we'd not played. We'd played Russia a couple of times and, and they were very good, but we felt that w we were catching them um, and we were close and, and it wouldn't, we needed to play our best to, to sort of perhaps get, get the a set or a win. Um, so, but it was a phenomenal experience for a first game. You know, it would have been nice to get a bit closer to, to a, a result, but it was, it, was a, it was a good start. But then, you, but then you, you know, you did step it up a level for the for the next match, and um, mm -hmm. the the historic first match and um, first win for Team GB sitting volleyball team at a Paralympic Games then against Morocco. Um, do you, similar? Do you do you remember that match? Do you remember the celebrations afterwards? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it. The fact is that you know when you when you get a sense. I think everybody that plays competitive sport, you can get a sense that you, if you can smell victory, you can get a sense, and and the team starts start start coming together, and you start putting the pressure on. So we felt we felt confident that we could we we could follow the game through and follow the game plan and and, and come out with a win. Um, it's just keeping a lid on it to make sure that um, you know you don't you don't get ahead of yourself and the nerves don't kick in. Um, so we played well as a team and, and we managed to get it through. But when you know when that final whistle goes, it was just an amazing experience because obviously the crowd just went ballistic. Um, clearly, you can't celebrate too much because you've got a game and you, you're practicing <laughs> the next day. So you know, you, but ultimately, it got us through to the quarterfinals of a Paralympic Games, which is you know, you know, which is a great, which is a great achievement. Have you have you watched the match back since since playing? 
Uh, yeah, I've watched some games. Um, there's some instances where um, they tend to do the rounds in so much that, um, you know, Justin Phillips was one of the who was blocking, didn't block particularly well. And, and one of the, the Brazil, again, another Brazilian team, they've got a seven foot player um, that, you know, on a sitting net is, it makes a big difference. Um, so that getting, getting the ball smacked squarely in my face um, through uh, poor blocking from Justin. Um, tends to come up now and again, but uh, yeah, no, good experiences. Yeah, but it's, I think it's good for looking back at that and having those memories and, and I guess sharing it with so many people as well, and people in the crowd and then people watching it as well at the time. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. And then you got knocked out by one of the best teams in the world, and the, the Iranians, I think, went on to get the silver. I think they finished yeah. second in that tournament. So not a, you know, not a bad way to, to, to go out really to the Iranians. Um, so, after, so after that, then obviously you, you 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 retired from indoor, and then they've kind of convinced you, come on, you come back, and you know join us in in the city volleyball um, national team. Where did your volleyball career take you after that? Um, well, after after London, um, it was pretty much it was the second time of of, of retiring, pretty much because I decided I thought I was retiring in, in two thousand and ten, um, but then went straight into the the sitting program. Um, so after 2012, we played a, I think 2013, and then it was time to time to hang the knee pads up. And was, did you find that tough? You know, after so many years, and you know, having it extended a little bit more, and, and all the success you had as well. Yeah, I, I, it's it's one of those things. I think it's a crass phrase, but you know when you know, and it was definitely time to stop. Um, and I had my hip replaced, so it was it was a good time to sort of get you know get back and walking properly, which is which is which is nice. But um, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where you know I've got no regrets. You know I got, perhaps should have stopped earlier, but you know when you when you love a sport, you just carry on playing as as long as you can. So if you don't get a bit, I just want to sort of dive into some questions and that sort of cut across your experience of the free sports then. And um, so put some questions to you to sort of compare your experience from the free. So um, a nice, simple one to start with that I don't think is a particularly easy one to, to answer. Which one was your favourite? If you had to pick one of the disciplines, which one would you pick? Um, yeah, that is tough. Um, <laughs> I, I think if, if I had to pick, and then I'd probably go with, with the, the indoor game. Um, just in so much that as a setter, the battle against the middle player was just something that I, I relished, you know, the, the, and you know the the, the, the game play and, and the, the tactics and the, the chess play of, of trying to get your players and your hitters in the right order and the right locate in the right positions and competing. It, it's just probably the indoor game um, if, if if I had to pick one. Um, in which which of the disciplines then did you find it hardest to serve? So, um, probably sitting, um, only in so much that obviously with, with the other two sports you can you can move around and you can jump and, and you can do everything, but from a sitting perspective um, your butt's got to be firmly squarely on the floor and also you can block the ball, and, or you can block a serve in sitting, okay. um, so it, it because of the distance of the of the net and, and the trajectory of getting balls up and down and, and people block, you know, blocking a serve, it, it is quite difficult. Put a good serve in. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not too bad in the other two, but yeah, tough on yeah. city. Um, I think you touched on this earlier, to be honest, and I think you, I've probably already given away your answer though, but you know, sitting volleyball, um, smaller net, oh sorry, lower net, smaller court, um, people often say it is, it is the fastest version, it's the fastest discipline of volleyball. Is that true in your experience? Yeah, yeah, without a shadow of doubt. But interested, I whether guys agree with it or not, but um, I found it um, really quite rewarding as well because it, it's, it's an aggressive sport. Whilst beach and indoor, you know, you've got to be aggressive to play a sport at any level. But because of, there is quite a lot of contact with the sport because of your, your legs are, are sort of crossing under the net, it's allowed. Um, and because of the because of that, it is quite an aggressive sport, and it is really quick. So you you can't and you've got to be thinking ahead of the game constantly. So it, you know if you can't think quick and make a decision quickly, you you will struggle. So I know obviously you know beach and indoor mentally demanding it as well. But mm. 
would that be the case then that you find more mentally demanding then because you've got to think you know not a few steps ahead but almost a few steps ahead of that because of the the pace of the game um yeah the pace of the game is probably the one that, that keeps it that, that demand i think the beach and indoor they, they, they're equally just as demanding um for different reasons it's just the fact that in, in on the sitting game that the ball's crossing the net so so much quicker um and and you know if someone's hitting the ball you you have you you you're reacting and it's on instinct you, you have very little time to move at times and then the sort of the last couple then which one would you say was the most um probably beach i think um by and large there's just the two of you on the sand and you know irrespective of whether it's hot windy cold or whatever you know the sand's pretty deep um and it is it's it's a, it's a hard game to you know you need to be fit and and you need to be strong so it's probably the beach is probably the most demanding physically the angles and the jumps and the, the, the leaps and dives i guess just to make sure that you get that ball and and uh, okay and then one last one it's okay if you had to pick then and this is across all disciplines or across the internationally and domestically one sort of your defining moment of your career the, the proudest moment what would what would you pick Oh, wow. um, I think, you know, without shadow of a doubt that London 2012 was by far the highlight for me in terms of representing Great Britain um, on the highest stage you can get. That's, that's by far. Um, and everything else. And Mallory, I'm extremely proud of the players and the coaching staff and everything that, that Mallory did. Um, because you know we, you know, to be that successful for so long, um, it took a lot of effort. Um, so, but I think London's probably the, you know, the crowning glory really. Yeah, and it sounds it sounds like a really special occasion, and mm. looking back as well, that the, the moment of those magical moments to be a part of, I can I can see and understand why. So, um, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, Richard, it's it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you for um, taking this trip down memory lane. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and um, yeah, thank, thank you for coming on board. No problem, thanks very much.